This video is brought to you by Helix Sleep. It seems today that all you see are Family Guy clones on your TV. Okay, <clears throat> you know, actually, I, I think it's getting better and, and there's more variety now than ever before. But there are still quite a few cartoons out there that channel the unholy yet financially successful energy of Family Guy. Ironic, considering that Family Guy was heavily inspired by The Simpsons. But hey, everyone knows that. Hell, even each respective series admits it. What most folks don't know about, though, is a failed animated family sitcom called Mother Up. Released in 2013 under the banner of Hulu, the show was heralded as, quote, Family Guy for Women, which is an interesting selling point, to say the least. Really puts it in perspective how much significance people put on animated family sitcoms when it comes to adult animation. Thanks, Fox Animation Domination. Don't want to stray too far off that trend. Now, I'm not saying that every animated family sitcom is automatically bad. Bob's Burgers, for example, is quite good. And King of the Hill is one of my favorite shows of all time. But there's no denying that this trope is built on the groundbreaking success that was The Simpsons and then Family Guy. It's staggering how many clones are out there that try to mimic the energy of these titans of adult animation, but ultimately fail. Like Mother Up! But hey, I try to give the benefit of the doubt when I can. And maybe there's more to Mother Up than being an uninspired Family Guy ripoff. Maybe, just maybe, Mother Up is actually good and is a show that is full of fun stories, hilarious jokes, and endearing characters. Fucking lawnmowers. Fucking lawnmowers. That's always the god lawnmowers. They're outside waiting for me when I record every single mother time. It's like the lawn service waits to see me through the window, walk into my recording booth, and says, Now, boys, attack! Mow the yard! Oh, all them! Oh, yeah, Mother Up. Let's find out. So, what are the origins of Mother Up? Well, the series was created by Marnie Near and Katie Torpy. <laughs> Torpedo! Uh, according to my sources, Mother Up was Hulu's second attempt at commissioning an original animated series for the streaming platform and followed the somewhat successful The Awesomes. It should be no surprise that the big selling point for Mother Up was the involvement of Eva Longoria, one of the stars from Desperate Housewives. According to Eva, she was interested in Mother Up because, quote, that's how the show was pitched to me. There's no female presence in animation. I'm a huge fan of Family Guy, American Dad, The Simpsons, and for me, I was like, you're right, there is no female lead. They're the mom or the wife. Rudy Wilson has a very male energy. We like to call her the female Peter Griffin because she's inappropriate and misguided and awkward and selfish. So for me to even play that in an animated form was awesome." End quote. You know, I think that's a fair statement from Eva with the state of adult animation and how there isn't as much representation for girls. But we'll talk about that later on in the video. The show is greenlit. It was developed by Rogers Media, Breakthrough Entertainment, and Bartle Entertainment, and 13 episodes were ordered up to stream on Hulu. Wait, does that mean that Disney technically owns Mother Up since they own 60% of Hulu? You know, I actually have no idea. <laughs> I mean, what doesn't the mouse own at this point? Do they own my channel? I actually don't know. But Mother Up made its debut in November of 2013. And yeah. <laughs> Just the one season, because people did not really care for it. Uh, maybe the show should have been called Mother Down. You know, because get down, you're no good. I'm not funny. So, what's Mother Up about? Well, the show stars Rudy Wilson, our main character who used to be a big-time music producer in New York. But she got caught up in some scandal that had to do with shooting children in South America. But she was quick to deflect blame for the mess, announce her retirement, and declare that she was going to go raise her two kids in the Canadian suburbs. Saskatchewan, I think, or Ontario, or I, I Canada. She went to she went to Canada. Now, how would I describe Rudy? Well, she's narcissistic, abrasive, selfish. A person who ultimately cares much more about her social life and status versus wanting to raise her kids. But I suppose that's the point of the show. 
That being said, there's a certain insincere charm about her that occasionally pops up, but those moments are few and far between. But here's the thing. Bad people do not automatically equate to bad characters. There are plenty of fictional characters who are absolute garbage when it comes to their personality, but that does not mean they aren't interesting. Here's the problem, though. Rudy isn't that interesting to me. So you're left with an unpleasant, boring character, and that's especially a problem when that's your show's protagonist. Other characters include Apple, Rudy's attention-starved five-year-old daughter, her son, Dick, who's like nine years old and, um, uh, how to describe this guy? Uh, he's like a kid, but he's kind of nervous about things, but also willingly gets into trouble and gets in over his head when it comes to his adventures? Uh, oblivious, maybe, is a word I would use? Okay, moving on, there's 2-Bit, a rapper who used to work with Rudy but still goes to her for help with things, especially when he gets into his wacky hijinks. Then there's Sarah, a neighbor of Rudy, who is also a mom and acts as the voice of reason and tries to give advice to Rudy on how she can be a better mother. I actually like Sarah's character, but it's not nearly enough to redeem the show. And then there's the rest of the cast, which is admittedly pretty forgettable, as they range from hostile mothers from the school to some teenage boy who's always screaming at his overly positive father. The episodes themselves, despite trying to be outrageous with crazy antics in the suburbs, also feel flat to me. As I write this video, I cannot recall a single episode where I go, oh yeah, that was a great story that held my attention. Like, not even once. You wanna know what's interesting though? There are two versions of the intro for this show. One is a rap from a guy who <laughs> has the same haircut as Vegeta, while the other one features a girl singing. I couldn't find out why there were two versions, but I'll tell you this, the girl version is superior. Uh, sorry, Vegeta. Curse you, Kakarot. I want to be singing in the intro for Mother Up. That's what <laughs> Vegeta sounds like, right? I don't know. So what are my overall thoughts about the show? Well, let's start off with the animation. It's not the best and feels somewhat static and boring. I imagine it was done on the cheaper side and was most likely animated with Toon Boom. Now, that's not to say that everything done with Toon Boom looks cheap or bad, but I think Mother Up was relying more on its characters and humor than its visuals, which is a very common denominator when it comes to Family Guy clones. Well, I say Family Guy clones inspired by Family Guy. These shows aren't trying to knock your socks off with visuals. They keep things somewhat simple since the backbone of these kinds of shows is the writing. And that's a problem when the writing is bad. Speaking of which, yeah, Mother Up fails in this category. Yeah, you know, maybe the word fail is a bit harsh, but it definitely did not capture my attention. The entire premise of the show is having Rudy struggle to become a good and responsible mother, whether it be Rudy trying to host an outrageous slumber party for her daughter, or Rudy refusing to quit cigarettes because her kids don't want her to die. Honestly, I'm trying to not be harsh on this show and hold it to some kind of unreasonable standard but I cannot deny that the stories were not interesting to me and were honestly grating to get through. Nothing about this is funny. On top of that, the dialogue felt flat as well, and the jokes rarely landed. Lots of low-hanging fruit that relies heavily on uninspired jokes about stereotypes. Where's your bingo card sheets? Mark one off for Asian stereotypes. Also, and perhaps it's just me, but when the characters would talk back and forth, their audio felt so empty. Like, I don't know if that's a weird observation and perhaps is a testament to how disinterested I was in the show. But yeah, be that as it may, it's still something I noticed. And I'm not sure why that's the case. Does it need background music? Better dialogue? <laughs> Probably yes to both. Now, the voice acting was fine. Eva Longoria felt appropriate for Rudy. And the rest of the cast was just fine. Except for Dick. Something about his voice got on my nerves. And it felt like he was talk yelling. It was an odd choice for his direction. Hey, Mom, it's me, Dick. I love you, and I want to go play outside, Mom. Is that how kids talk? I don't even know. So how would I improve the show? Well, I'd completely overhaul the premise with Rudy and her kids. I don't like that Apple and Dick are Rudy's biological children. 
It just doesn't make sense to me, especially when the father is also brought into the picture. Like throughout the show, there is no dad, but then he shows up in the last episode and I'm like, oh, this might explain things. His presence might clarify why Rudy had children to begin with. But no, he only added to the confusion because he as well is a piece of garbage. Why would either of these selfish individuals who are obsessed about themselves have children? The show never explains that. I think it would make much more sense if Rudy became the legal guardian for the kids due to some outside reason. Maybe the kids belong to Rudy's down and out sibling and Rudy has to step up and take care of these kids because no one else will. That she, despite being incredibly self-centered, cares enough to take on that challenge. If that was the case, I would have much more patience for Rudy being inexperienced and allowing her selfish ways to rear up while figuring out this mother stuff. But no, canonically, those are her biological children. And that's very off-putting to me. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but Despicable Me is a good example of making this concept work. It was able to demonstrate how a self-centered and estranged parent can grow close to their kids over time because they actually care. And that's what Mother Up is primarily missing. You can make improvements to the animation, the dialogue, the stories, but the core of the series is, in my opinion, a flawed premise that damages every other aspect of the show. Fix that, and it would vastly improve the entire series. But hey, that's just my opinion. So, in conclusion, I can see why Mother Up only lasted for a single season and was ultimately a failure. It just wasn't very inspired and never found its footing. None of the characters or stories hooked me in, and the jokes and the dialogue were flat. Actually, I don't think I ever laughed out loud a single time while watching the show. Hell, I didn't even smile. I just sat there with a blank expression on my face, staring into the void. That being said, I wouldn't say that Mother Up is terrible either. It's not good, but it's watchable. Though I'm not going to watch it again anytime soon. There are much better options out there, though I do fully admit that the majority of adult animated shows feature guys as the main character, and that girl characters are typically filling a supporting role. Mother Up was an attempt to challenge the status quo, but it lacked substance and wasn't very engaging. Plus, Rudy was just downright unpleasant. Tukin Birdie, on the other hand, is much better and offers more when it comes to interesting characters, compelling stories, and humor that is actually funny. In regard to the state of adult animation, I'm optimistic, and I think that adult animated cartoons have a bright future ahead of them. In my opinion, the streaming wars will be the catalyst adult animated cartoons need to push the envelope even further, and hopefully that will create more opportunities for girl characters to take the spotlight in a meaningful way that is more than just being called Family Guy for Women. Ooh, that seems like you're in the shadow of a greater sire. <laughs> think, Rudy, think. Why would they watch your show when they could be watching me, Family Guy? A big shout out to this video sponsor, Helix Sleep. I am now on month number four with my Helix mattress and yep, still loving the hell out of it. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses to fit your personal needs based on your own body type and sleep style. They even have this awesome sleep quiz to help you find a mattress that fits your personal preferences. Just hop over to their website, take the quiz, and get matched with a mattress that is perfect for your unique body type and sleep preferences. Do you prefer to have a firm mattress or one that is super soft? Perhaps a fusion of both. And what position do you sleep in? on your side or your stomach or on your back. And for those who share a bed with a partner, you can have them take the quiz alongside you so you can both find a perfect compromise. I took the sleep quiz a few months ago and was like, I like to sleep on my side and I also like a mattress that is soft but has some firmness to it. And the results, ta-da, the Midnight Lux. And that folks was exactly what I needed. I also ordered this in a queen size because as you all know, I've got my old man miniature poodle, Lammy, and this guy in his long lanky legs take up like half of the bed. So finally, I can actually keep my body on the mattress while sleeping at night and not have to push my legs off the frame. Real talk though, 
the comfort levels of the Midnight Lux blows my old mattress out of the water. Like, it's not even a contest. Whenever my head hits the pillow, I am out. Also, I still can't get over how this mattress was mailed to my front door for free. When it first arrived, I was like, nah, there's no way my mattress is in this box. And then I opened said box. And boy, was I surprised, especially when it pinned me against the wall. Word of advice, folks, when you open the mattress, do it in a room where it can actually like expand. And if you're hesitant about buying a Helix you haven't been able to try, hey, no worries. There's a 100 night sleep trial. So you have over three months to try out your selection and make sure that you love it. If you don't, Helix will pick up the mattress and you will get a full refund. So I absolutely recommend Helix Sleep. I'm a very happy customer and I think owning a quality mattress is very important, especially one that can be literally mailed to your front door. So if you're in the market looking for a new bed, check out Helix Sleep. Click the link down below or go to helixsleep.com slash saberspark and get up to $200 off your Helix order. Hell, they even toss in two pillows for free, so go check it out.